Hello everyone. Can everyone at the back hear me clearly? Um so I need you to cooperate with me and be quiet. Right? Um I'm going to ask you a few things and I want this to be very interactive, yeah? So um my name is Tunde and I'm a chess master. How many of you play chess? Game of chess. Alright, good. Who has never seen a chessboard before? If you've never seen a chessboard, raise up your hand. Raise your hand. You've never seen. So you've seen one before. What does it look like? Good. A board with so many squares and pieces, black and white colors. Good observation. Now, when I say chess players, you say observe, okay? Chess players. Observe. Chess players. Observe. I think one important thing about chess is um, the pieces look very beautiful, yeah? They were carved in a way that looks very interesting. And um, 16 years ago, I saw a chess board for the first time in my life. 16 years ago. So I'll tell you a story. And I'll tell you how that story can um, help you to not just learn chess, but to actually believe that you can do something differently that affects everyone else right 16 years ago um, I was uh, 10 years old and uh, I was in primary 6 so after my primary 6 education um, I had to drop out of school so I didn't go to school for two years do you know why because my parents couldn't afford to pay the school fees then so I had to stay at home for two years and I wasn't going to I wasn't going to go to school again because my parents wanted me to learn how to fix phones. Then something happened. I saw a chessboard. So I used to go and play video games at a barbing salon. I know some of you have video games at home. But back then, only very few people had video games at home. So it was PS1 then. So I used to go there to play video games. And on that day, the barber just brought out a small plastic chess set. And that was the first time I ever saw a chessboard in my entire life. And I was curious. So I asked them, Uncle, what is this? And he said, what does it look like? So he was showing me the knight. I said, it looks like a donkey. And he started laughing. What does it look like? Horse. A horse, yeah. <laughs> I thought it looked like a donkey anyway. And um, he said he couldn't teach me because the game was for smart people. And I was too young to learn. But I didn't believe that. What did you say? Give her a round of applause. True. That's a blatant lie because you're not too young to do anything. Now listen, I didn't take that as an answer. So I just kept watching. And with time, I was able to pick up the rules of the game from just watching him and his friends play. So I knew how to play the game. Luckily, something happened and I got back to school and I started my secondary school. And the secondary school I attended had a chess club. So um, I started competing for the school, and I won a trophy for the first time, and I won a couple of tournaments for my school. And now, listen, when I was 10 years old, I couldn't really speak English well because I went to a primary school where they used to teach us with Yoruba. We used to sit on the floor to write. So it was really hard to learn anything substantial. So because of that, I couldn't speak English and I had very low self-esteem. So I wouldn't want to talk because I was afraid that I would make a grammatical blunder and everyone would start laughing. Has anyone ever experienced that before? You made a mistake and your friend just started laughing. All right, good. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll tell you what to do when, whenever that happens. So because of that, I was a very quiet and shy kid that didn't know how to express himself. But then something happened. After I learned chess, I became really good at it and my coach said I was gifted because I was. I won a couple of tournaments. And you know what that did for me? He made me confident in my ability because now I could now do something more than everyone else in my class. And that gave me confidence, you know, to be more expressive. Now after secondary school, I went to the university. I was part of the college chess team, so I was on a scholarship. That means I didn't have to pay school first. I was representing the school and we traveled 
and I won a lot of tournaments and uh, I was ranked one of the best players in Nigeria. Now, chess changed my life, right? It changed my life because it didn't give me money because I was not rich, but it helped me see the world differently. You know that the world, you know, for most people, we have different realities. For you, the way you understand the world because of how maybe your parents have showed at you is different from the way some other people understand the world. You know there are people that can't go to school, right, because their parents can't afford to pay their school fees, right? So that was my experience before I found a new world through chess. So because of chess, we'd always go out to tournaments, I would meet other kids, I will make friends from King's College, from other schools, and it changed my understanding of the world, and it gave me an education. Now, the first thing I want to teach you guys is that the education you're getting in school is not the only kind of education that matters. Education beyond A for Apple and everything else you're learning in the classroom is the capacity for thought. Your ability to think independently, think about a problem, and come up with a solution, right? This is what education truly means. And when you're playing chess, you'll be faced with a lot of problems, and you have to think about a solution to it. Now, remember that when I was in primary six that I dropped out of school, it was because my parents had a problem. And chess gave me a lifeline. So when I finished school, I thought about what I could do to solve that problem for other children like me. So what did I do? I started a project called Chess in Slums. Who knows what a slum is? Slum. S-L-U-M. Slum. Slum, yeah. Tell us. A ghetto, yes, good. Another definition. Good, that's a brilliant one. A poorly developed area where people can't afford basic amenities. Even down to clean water, right? Now, I decided to take chess. Remember, which my coach told me was a game for highly intelligent people and rich people. Take it to slums. And do you know why I did that? Because a lot of children in slums cannot afford to go to school. They can't afford the basic things. But then, I knew that if I could teach them chess, and they could become really good at it, they could become champions. And when they become champions, they will get better opportunities. So that was the problem that I saw that I wanted to solve. So, huh? Does chess really? Yes. And I'll tell you how it helps in life, right? I'll tell you another story. So when, okay. <laughs> Yes, I got some money, but not enough money to really do anything substantial. But I'll tell you what chess gave me that was so much more than money that I'm now helping to give other children. Now, when I started the project, I would always go to the slums and teach the children. Then on one of those days, I met a boy. His name is Ferdinand. Now, Ferdinand is a boy with a medical condition called cerebral palsy. Was, have you ever heard of cerebral palsy? Huh? So it's a medical condition. Oh yeah, who will tell us? Huh? Okay, to keep it simple, it's brain damage. So when a child is born and there's damage to the brain, it might affect the way the child talks, walks, moves, you know. And in Ferdinand's case, he couldn't talk and he walked in a very different way. So because of that, other children in his community will bully him and make fun of him. Is that a good thing? No, never do that. So they would always bully him. And Ferdinand's parents were very poor, so he couldn't go to school too. And he couldn't talk. So he didn't know how to express himself. Whenever he tried to go play with his friends, they would always bully him. So he would go back home to his mom and start crying. But when we went to Ferdinand's community, and I discovered him, and we wanted to train children. His friends were saying we should not pick him because he doesn't talk. So if someone doesn't talk, how do you teach them how to play chess? Now, when I saw Ferdinand, I tried to talk to him, but he couldn't respond. But then I added him to the class, and he became one of our students for the chess training. And I can tell you that after a few weeks of training Ferdinand and the other children, 
Guess who was the best in the entire community? Ferdinand. Yes, I remember Ferdinand has this medical condition that makes him incapacitated. So nobody really took him seriously. But guess what? He was a genius. He had the ability to think, but he couldn't express that through words. But through chess, he found a way to express it, and he was absolutely brilliant at it. And when I discovered that Ferdinand was a gifted child, I paid more attention to him, right? And I just kept watching him. And for the first time, I would always see him laugh. Whenever he made a very good move, and maybe checkmated his opponent, he was very excited, and his eyes lit up in a different way. You know what we now did? We now organized a tournament for all the children. Guess who won the tournament? Ferdinand won the tournament. Let's give him a round of applause. So Ferdinand won this chess tournament, and I got a call from someone. Do you know who called me? The governor of Lagos State. And he said he had seen Ferdinand's picture playing chess, and he would like to invite him to his house to play chess against him. So, and Ferdinand, because of uh, the situation of his parents, he had never been outside his community before. He lives in a place called Makoko. Makoko is a slum on black water, water that looks like sewage, a really bad slum community. And for the first time, Ferdinand got in a car, I went to the governor's house to play chess against him. And the governor is a very good chess player that has been playing for so many years. But Ferdinand had only been playing for a few months. And guess what? The game ended in a draw. And the governor was so impressed that he went into his room and brought out a millionaire and gave it to Ferdinand. Yes. And now, listen, Ferdinand has seven other siblings. So the governor sponsors his education and the education of all his other siblings, right? And that was how the gift of chess changed Ferdinand's life. Now, just like, uh, has it changed mine? Give me a round of applause, yeah? Thank you, very good. Now, to answer your question, how does chess really help? It's in two ways. Now, the first thing is it helps you learn a lot of important life skills, right? Like I said, everything you're learning in school, when you grow up and become an adult, it's not the same exact things you are learning that you'd see in actual life. You are just learning all those things so it can help you develop yourself so that when you encounter a problem in life, all those things you've learned in school would have prepared you to be able to solve those problems. That is the reason why you're getting an education. You're not getting an education so that when you become an adult, you learn how to draw a grasshopper and label it. No, just to develop your mind in a way that you can actually solve problems, not just for yourself, but for Nigeria, for Africa, and for the world. And learning chess will help you develop those critical thinking skills to boost your creativity. And most importantly, your imagination. Everyone say imagination. Imagination. Now, I want you to do something. I want you to close your eyes. Everyone, close your eyes. I want us to imagine something together. Now, imagine your favorite food. Let's say your favorite food is amala. Oh, yeah, now imagine the amala on the table. Can you see it in your mind? Yeah, now imagine there's a plate of egusi soup beside that amala. Have you seen it? There's now one very big chicken in the center. Can you see it? I can see some of you are salivating right now. Can you see it? Then there's another big bowl with momo inside. Can you see it? Then there's ribena on the side to step it down. Can you see it? Yeah, open your eyes. You guys like food too much. Now, let's imagine something else. Now, close your eyes. Now, imagine yourself in 10 or 15 years. Now, some of you want to be doctors, some of you want to be lawyers, YouTubers, or whatever it is you want to be when you grow up. Now imagine yourself 10 to 15 years from now being that person. As a doctor, can you see yourself wearing that stethoscope? Can you see it? Do you like that picture? Does it look good? Is that what you want your future to look like? What else? Can, oh yeah, tell me randomly, what do you want to be when you grow up? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
still close your eyes. Mm -hmm. More. An act so good. Mm -hmm. Artist, good. Can you still imagine it? Can you still imagine it? Do you like what you see? Do you know what you need to do to get to that place? Yeah, open your eyes. Now, listen, that is the power of your imagination. Now, not only does chess help you to build a creative imagination, but you need to understand that your imagination is the most powerful thing that you have as children. A lot of these old people like me, uh, we... Yes, I'm a little older now anyway. But, <laughs> but listen, a lot of us, we can only hope to have the kind of imagination that you have. Okay? So that imagination is your greatest strength. And it is how you're going to change the world. Right? When you grow up, a lot of the things that we use now, this wristwatch, the internet, this chair, anything that you see around you is a product of someone's imagination. Do you know these things never existed before? Someone actually thought about them and imagined it. Something you've never seen before. Imagine it in their head and they made it happen. So that is the power you have with imagination. That is one thing chess helps you with and a lot of other things that you're learning in school. So now, I'm going to end it with this. Just like Ferdinand, a boy, you know, living with brain damage, right? He's now in school now and he's learning and he's doing very well in school, right? He didn't let those limitations because his friends were making jest of him or bullying him. He didn't let it limit him and he became a chess champion. Now he will go on to do other things, right? Beyond just being a chess champion, he will go to school, he will learn and he will become whatever he wants to be. And his dreams will come true. He will be able to help his family out of poverty, right? That is the power of believing beyond your limitations, right? And I want all of you to believe too that with your imagination, with your dreams, you can actually do it. And we can all do great things from a small place. Say, I can do great things from a small place. I can do great things from a small place. I can do great things from a small place. So now, how many people want to learn how to play chess now? Hmm? If you don't want to learn, tell me why. Because a lot of people say, chess is boring. Is that true? <laughs> oh yeah, no. Let's talk. Let's talk. Why do you think chess is boring? Tell me. Tell me. Alright. It takes a long time to learn. Okay. <laughs> it takes too much brain capacity. Okay. <laughs> it says you have to crack your head because your opponent is better than you and you're always losing. All right, let me take some of these questions. Now, chess doesn't take a long time to learn. I wish I actually brought a chess board. I could teach you how to play chess in just 20 minutes. You can learn all the rules of the game and start playing. Now, listen, you just need a really good teacher and you have to be committed to actually learning. And what she said, it requires a lot of cerebral brain capacity. That is not true. Yes, it requires a lot of thinking. But that's what we need, yeah? We need thinkers. Huh? Don't we need thinkers? But now listen, you don't even need to really crack your brain. When you learn it the right way, and you learn the rules of the game, and the fundamentals, it becomes easy. Now, nothing in this world is easy to learn or easy to do. So sometimes you're going to lose. Sometimes you're going to feel like, oh, you failed at this thing, and it's painful. Now, before I started my chess project, I used to teach in schools like this, right? And a lot of the kids, whenever they lost at a chess game, oh, they would start crying. Uncle, I don't want to play chess again. Uncle, it's too hard. But guess what? When they win, they're always very happy and jumping around. When I lost too for the first time, I cried. But now listen, one thing you will learn as you continue to grow is that losing is going to be a part of your journey. And at some point, you are going to have to learn to live with it not just let it limit you, but actually learn from those mistakes and become better and stronger. The only way you can become wiser, stronger, and better is by actually failing or losing. So chess is the perfect opportunity to learn. So when you lose, the question should be, what mistake did I make? How can I make it better? Then that is how anyone becomes a champion. Everybody that has ever done any great thing in the world. So 
don't be afraid of losing when you lose i know it hurts but learn from it and become better okay do we promise to do that yeah. are you sure yeah. all right your question uh-huh sorry uh uh-huh Will he be able to talk? <laughs> now, listen, that's a very good question. Now, Ferdinand, Ferdinand goes to a special school for special kids. Now, I won't say disabled children. You know what I call them? Differently abled. Everyone say differently abled. It means that while they can't do things like the rest of us, they do things a little differently. So it is not nice to even make jest of people like that that are differently abled, okay? So it's in a school for differently abled children. So there are teachers that are actually trained to be able to teach them, even if they don't speak, to still be able to get them to learn, okay? You know, blind people to go to school, they learn, they become lawyers, they become, you know, they, they, huh? Yeah, people that are blind, yes. Yes, they become lawyers. I have a friend that is blind, he hasn't blind from birth, but he's a very good lawyer. For real. <laughs> now, hello, listen. I don't want us to delve into it, but there's a way that blind people are able to read and learn. It's called Braille's, yeah? But you can ask your parents or your teachers about that. No, they don't see. How many of you know Cobams? Cobams, the pianist. Do you know Cobams is blind? So how does he play the piano? He has been blind from birth. Yeah, from birth, yeah. Yeah, so the more you do something, right, the better you become at it, right? So Ferdinand doesn't speak, but he has found another way to express himself, right? Oh, yeah, now listen. He says, what if you have tried something over and over again and you're still not good at it? How many of you have experienced that before? What was that thing for you? What was it? Maths. Okay. How about you? Scrabble. Okay. To hold your breath for long in water. <laughs> okay, good. Uh huh. Playing the guitar. <laughs> All right. I know you guys would have a lot of questions. And that was why I said, you guys, one thing I love that you have is the power of imagination and the power of curiosity. So always ask questions. It's good. Now, when you're not good at something that is seemingly difficult, first remember that there are a lot of people that struggled with the same thing. Now, who knows Albert Einstein? Yeah, one of the great... Yes. In fact, they thought he was a dummy in school. Now, <laughs> without Albert, a lot of the progress that we have made as a society would have never been possible, right? He gave us a lot of scientific breakthrough using mathematics, physics, and everything else, right? And he was a dullard in school, and his teachers even said it was good for nothing. Now, like I said, a lot of people have also struggled, thinking, oh, I'm a failure at this. But then somebody told him that, see, it doesn't matter that you're failing at this. Let us help you learn differently. Now, the problem is that for most people, especially in schools, when a child is not learning the way you're teaching them, you have to teach them in the way that the child can learn. So if your teacher is teaching you in a way that you don't understand, that teacher should teach you in a way that you, are, you can actually learn. Now, look, think about the other things that you're really good at and the way you're excited about learning those things because you learn them in a different way. So even if you're not good at something, right, make sure you can communicate what is most difficult for you. Why are these things like this? Why do I not understand these things? Communicate it properly so that when you learn it differently, you get better results, right? Nobody is a failure at anything. There's a struggle just like you and other people but then, if you take a different approach to it, you would learn it. Because if you can do it, then I can do it. Okay? Now, um, let me take two more questions and, and we'll wrap it up. Any more questions? All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's 
Now, when you're playing on the computer, there are a lot of different applications that you can use. There are some that the computer doesn't show you the move at all. You are going to be playing against somebody in another country online, right? Those ones that allow you to play against computer, they're also good. But sometimes the computer will show you the moves, right? Now, it is better to play offline, in my own opinion, because it gives you an opportunity to actually socialize, meet new friends. Do you know that I've only been outside Nigeria maybe three times, but I have friends in over 60 countries around the world? And do you know one thing we have in common? We play chess. So there's a community of chess players in every country in the world. So it's a good way to meet people, people that care about the same things that you care about, you know, that's how you make friends as an adult, right? So I think chess is a great tool to socialize. When you go to another school, like for me now, I grew up in Ikorodu, but the first time I came to the island, for example, was because of chess. And I met other kids in other schools, and we became friends from playing chess and learning from one another. So it's better to play on the board, but playing online too has its own benefits, right? So you can mix it up, play sometimes on the board, play sometimes online. Then because the world is becoming digital, chess is going to become a lot more digital too. So just make sure you're using it to learn the right way. Does that answer your question, sir? Alright, good. So any other final question? Anything else? Alright, let's give ourselves a round of applause. And our final mantra, say, it is possible to do great things from a small place. Say, I can do great things from a small place. I can do great things from a small place. I can do great things from a small place. Thank you very much. I really hope you believe that and you use that knowledge to change the world, to change your world and to make Nigeria and Africa a better place. Thank you very much. See, I